Dr. M. Anandurai is former director at ISAC in ISRO. Dr. Amitabha Ghosh is a space scientist associated formerly with uh, NASA. Annapurni Subramanyam is director at the Indian Institute of Astrophysics. Uh, and Professor Vyas Rajan is joining us. He's former ISRO scientist as well. So thank you very much. Uh, very esteemed panel joining us. Uh, we've got less than, what, uh, 24 hours uh, to look forward to this historic landing. Let me start with you, Dr. Anadurai. Why is tomorrow such an important day? If there were to be this successful soft landing tomorrow, uh, we're expecting the time to be between 5.45 and 6.05. Uh, why would it be such a big deal in the scientific community, in the, in the space technology world? Yeah, Tim Shaw, you recall, uh, uh, 60s and 70s, nearly 40, 50 years back, the moon race was there as a peak of the, uh, uh, the, the uh, in, in, uh, Russia in uh, US conflict point of view. But now, now after this big gap of 40, 50 years, uh, back to the moon is the big campaign has come. Uh, thanks to the discovery of water on the moon by Chandrayaan 1. When that happens, uh, definitely the back to the moon is a uh, big crash is happening towards the polar region of the moon where the discovery of water moon has been identified. Uh, now, uh, as a follow on, good missions are coming. And in that case, now we have started the seed. I think we, when we are making a soft landing on this unknown terrain, uh, that makes that will maintain the lead, whatever we have taken. And possibly it, it can open up the various possibilities uh, in the future when the, the, uh, the whole internationally people are looking for the uh, moon in a different way. And that way, I think that tomorrow's uh, soft landing will technically will keep India in the edge, even though we started late. I think uh, that will enable us to be uh, in the forerunner in the second attempts what we are going for the moon in the name of back to the moon. I also want to go across to Amitabha Ghosh. Now, one of the things which is rare as far as tomorrow's mission is concerned, and that is uh, that this will be one of the first attempts, in fact, perhaps the first attempt to try and land on the south side of the moon. Why is that so important? And why does that make the mission itself more difficult than what we've seen in the past missions, whether it's by the US or by the erstwhile USSR, or more recently by China? Landing, soft landing is hard. I, I'm not sure soft landing at the South Pole is that much harder. So, so that is one thing is, which is going on is, uh, is the first part of, of your answer is um, we are going back as in the world like NASA and uh, as part of the Artemis program, they're going back to the moon, tr uh, trying to set up a more permanent settlement, not as an exploration mission like uh, in the Apollo days. So imagine if you were to go to America and you did not have um, water available in America or return fuel available from America, you have to carry everything from Delhi. So that would make your uh, cost that much expensive. So here uh, we need some resources on the moon to make human missions and a human settlement on the moon viable. Where does South Pole come into the picture? There are some craters at the South Pole which are permanently in shade. So they never see sunlight and so the, the water never melts. Um, because otherwise, you know, the moon can get very hot during the lunar day, which is 14 days. So since there is a repository of ice, <coughs> can you melt that ice and can you extract water and oxygen and hydrogen from it? So where all these missions come into play is we're trying to understand the distribution, the composition, um, the location of the ice. Okay. So, so that is where these missions become important. Uh, Dr. Anupurni Devi, you know, this is the third attempt of the Chandrayaan. Uh, the second attempt failed because in the final few minutes, uh, the lander was not able to slow down enough to make a soft landing on the lunar surface. As a result, it crashed in the final few moments. What are the differences that ISRO has made between Chandrayaan 2 and Chandrayaan 3? Yeah, so um, what I hear is that the, the, uh, this, the, all the tests which has been carried out have taken care of the uh, broader uh, uh, deviations. So there are parameters and the parameters can deviate. So when you have to take a decision, that decision should, should be within these parameters. 
Now, if you broaden these parameters, the decision taken can be, uh, you can also include some adverse conditions. Okay. So these, these margins are included and also tested. And also the onboard software is able to make a more intelligent decision, even if the deviations happen. So there are more sensors, but the in information from the sensors are required to understand, you know, what is the horizontal speed, the vertical speed, what is the angle with which the, the uh, spacecraft is moving, and also where it is going to land. It is sloping or, you know, can it actually fall on the uh, two, four uh, legs, etc. And all these strengthening and the margins which are allowed for deviations are also uh, expanded and well tested. So these conditions give us these uh, kind of testing and simulations give us more confidence in the fact that we will be able to do this feat. So I, I believe this time the landing area is also a little wider. It's about four it's meters landing. wide is what, what we're given to understand. So maybe that will help as well. I don't know. But uh, let me also ask Professor Vyas Rajan. You know, again, I keep coming back to this. Where Chandrayaan 2, uh, you know, met with failure was in the final few minutes, I think in the last two minutes or so, where it was not able to break sufficiently enough to be able to reduce the speed to such a slow level that uh, you can enable a soft landing of the lander. Uh, what has changed between Chandrayaan 2 and Chandrayaan 3? What experience has the mission team learned from Chandrayaan 2, which has been incorporated into Chandrayaan 3? I won't call it a partial failure. There were some anomalies in the last part of the landing. Otherwise, put all this itself is a lot of challenge. But it gave us a lot of lessons. And Chairman Isro, so I won't be able to explain every detail. Okay. Chairman Isro has explained so much of the details that from between that to this, right from the weight onwards, there are many things. They added some new things. They have learned some of it. Not only they corrected, they said, okay, oh gosh, I now I got time. I will change this thing. I also. I also want to know from you, again, I asked this question to one of our earlier panelists as well. Why is the soft landing on the south side, on the southern pole of the moon, uh, uh, why is that harder? Why is that important as well? Because just a few days ago, uh, we saw the Russian mission, Luna 25, which I think was a mission that they had sent to the moon after many, many years. Uh, that crashed onto the lunar surface. So explain to our viewers in layman terms why it's particularly difficult are uh, the part of the moon where the landing is, at, is being attempted tomorrow. One thing, I am very sad that uh, uh, the, the Russian one took place, but it is not during soft landing. Oh. India's okay. Chandrayaan 2 was during the soft landing. Mm -hmm. The Japanese who had failed also was very close to soft landing. Mm -hmm. Israel which had also was very close to soft landing. That is different from, unfortunately, what the Russian one. They did not even come to the current maneuver. See, it goes around 110, you would have, people would have eaten yeah. with 110, 180, 100, like that. From that, they bring it down very close to 25 to 100 or 130 or something like that. Russian thing also was to come to that. It had not come. For coming to that, they tried. So it is in the Lunar orbit itself it had done. So coming pro this itself now we have got a this is called a second uh, crash brute or something they call it some name. So it has come. It is 25 and 110. Now yeah. you it will start going down. So it's 100 by 25. Then what what what, what this means is, is that at the farthest point from the moon it's at 100 kilometers and the closest point to the moon. It's at 25 kilometers. In the last 24 hours, we're told it's basically going down closer to the lunar surface, essentially driven in large part because of lunar gravity. But